Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Prosser United Methodist, Methodist Church. I'm Bo Bryan, the pastor here. And uh, it's good to be back after a, a week's vacation down in uh, California. Uh, but um, back now with, with you all. I do have an announcement for those online. And that is that if um, you would like to take communion today with us, I will be going through the communion liturgy. If you would like to pause the video, get something to drink, and a little piece of bread or cracker, uh, please do that now, and then we'll um, do the communion part later on. A couple of announcements. You can see announcements that are printed in your bulletin there. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that the memorial uh, reception for Pat Probsting, who passed away a few weeks ago, will be at the, the Princess Theater on August 12th, that's a Friday, from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, Pat was a very active member in this church for many, many years. Uh, last mm, about 10 years or so, she's been living in Seattle nearer to family, and she passed away recently. Uh, these banners that you see over there on the side and up here at front uh, are, are banners that she made. She was very uh, artistically oriented uh, and uh, provided a lot of that in our church and so we will definitely miss her uh, in this but we'll um, definitely want to uh, say goodbye in that memorial reception there and now remain standing uh, and turn in the back of your red hymnals to page 804 for Psalm 82 and our liturgist, now our liturgist this morning is Elisa Riley and she will be leading us through the psalm she will be reading the light face print and uh, we will respond with the dark face print, bold face print. And uh, we do have a red R, but we will not be singing the sun response, so we'll just go through the reading part of this. God is seated in the divine council and in the midst of the God holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and how partiality to the wicked. 
Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods, God-like offspring, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to you belong all the nations. Please join me in the opening prayer. Eternal light, shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy upon us. That with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may see your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And please join me in our reading, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 4. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the later times some will renounce the faith by paying attention to the deceitful spirits and teaching of demons, through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciousness are seared with a hot iron. They forbid marriage and abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything God created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected, provided it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by God's word and by prayer. If you put these instructions before the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Jesus Christ, nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with profane and foolish tales. Train yourself in godliness, for while physical training is of some value, godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and suffer reproach, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I arrive, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice, devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Will you join me for a moment of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations upon each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today we're gonna talk about godliness. Godliness sounds like a kind of a strange word, doesn't it? Godliness, godlikeness, or being like God, or doing the things that God wants us to do. Godliness is the term that Paul uses here in writing to Timothy. And there's a couple of ways that he talks about that or that he um, refers or, or shows what godliness is. This first section, the first five verses of this chapter, he's actually talking about what it is not. Uh, and uh, apparently at this time, this is sort of second generation uh, of, the, of, of believers. You know, it's been a while since um, Jesus rose from the cross and the churches have all gotten started and Paul's been out doing his missionary journeys and the churches have, uh, are, are growing and, and, uh, and so it's like second generations are starting to come in now. So there's not this 
ex immediate expectation that something's going to happen like there was right after Jesus went, uh, uh, went up, ascended into heaven. Um, there was sort of, at the beginning, there was sort of this expectation, well, Jesus is going to come again pretty soon, we think. You know, and then after time kind of wore on, uh, then it began. They began to settle in and say, "Well, maybe it's not coming right away, uh, but Jesus is still coming at some point." At first, Paul wrote to when his early letters wrote to people and and kind of advocated for people uh, to be ready for that day uh, and to not think about things like getting married and starting families and that sort of thing because this was going to happen really soon and everything was going to change anyway so uh, let's just be ready for that but now after this extended period of time Paul has revised the, his way of thinking and the reasoning uh, that people are now giving for uh, abstaining from marriage and from uh, and from uh, eating meats and or certain kinds of foods uh, that um, the reasons they're giving for that is more about moral purity or purity of the person. Uh, and they're, they're kind of getting off into a, a sidetrack there with that, is what he's saying. That, and he, he responds to that by saying, hey, that's not godliness at all. That's, that's actually, your, what you're saying is that the stuff that God gave us, that God created, is not good. It's not pure. It's it's going against God, actually. Um, and so they're, they're, he's saying, you know, don't don't talk about abstaining from marriage or from eating certain foods because God created us as people to be in relationship with each other, and God created us to eat all these various kinds of food. And it was good. That's what the scriptures say. And remember, for Paul, the scriptures were what we consider to be the Old Testament. So that's what the scriptures say. That's how we are godly. That's how we live a life that is good, by giving thanks to God and praise to God for these gifts that God has created. Not by denying them or saying that they're bad. So that's one point. Uh, one way in which, um, in which Paul is saying, this, this is what godly life is like. It's, it's about embracing the, the life that God has given us and that God has with us and in us as we are alive. Then the second part of it uh, has to do more with our practice. In, in fact, he ends up uh, this, this chapter with the word practice. Put these things into practice and devote yourself to them. And he's talking about things like reading scripture and prayer and gathering together for worship and those kinds of things that he's encouraging all people to do. Now it does sound like he's talking just to Timothy, but you also notice in verse 6 that he's, he's telling Timothy, read these things out to all of your people, too. Remember I talked when we got started on this letter to, the, uh, letter to Timothy, that although it's written to Timothy and refers to him uh, many times, it was a letter that was meant to be read out to the church, and not just Timothy's church, but all churches. And these are instructions for all of us as Christians. And so, in ways to be godly, when he talks about um, train yourself in godliness, ways to be godly are practicing these things throughout our lives. We, um, as human beings, we tend to compartmentalize things a lot. Maybe some people do it more than other people. Some people are better at integrating things in parts of the various parts of their lives, but other people tend to compartmentalize it. So we have, we have our work life, and we have our home life, and we have our church life, and they're all different compartments. And we uh, uh, can get into this, this way of living where everything is separated from each other. And what Paul is advocating for Timothy is, no, 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 that's, you're supposed to integrate it more, all of it together. Practice these things all the time and with each other so that you are all together 
learning more about your relationship with God, growing in that relationship with God, continuing in that relationship with God. And that's a lifelong thing. That's something we do for our entire lives. In essence, Paul is saying that to become a Christian is to change your identity, your way of living, who you think of yourself as, as a person. It's not just we go to church and that's being Christian on Sunday morning and that's, that's that part of it, life. No, it's all of our life that is influenced by the fact that we believe Jesus is the Christ and we, and we uh, believe in God and we believe that we should be doing what Jesus commanded us, loving each other and loving ourselves uh, and loving God. We have an Eagle Scout with us, uh, Sydney Moon back there. Hi, Sydney. How you doing? We're going to have a service uh, for Eagle Scout this coming Saturday uh, evening here in the sanctuary and the reception following afterwards. And uh, there's going to be two other uh, uh, scouts becoming Eagle Scouts. One of the things about becoming an Eagle Scout is not is exactly what I was just talking about. It's not just a, uh, a ceremony that you go through and you get the badge and the patch and, and, uh, and, and then you get cake afterwards. Uh, and then that's it. You're an Eagle Scout. And you've done that. You can check that off your list and, and go on with your right, life. When you are an Eagle Scout, you are an Eagle Scout for life. For life. That becomes part of who you are. And we were just talking before the, the service uh, about how that, that affects your whole life. It's not just that you're an Eagle Scout and you come to Scouts and, and they recognize you're an Eagle Scout and you have a, a kind of leadership position within the Scout troop still. But it affects people, how people see you at work or how people see you when they know, they find out that you're an Eagle Scout uh, and as friends or, or in, uh, in other ways. It becomes part of your identity, of who you are. That's the same thing with being a Christian. It becomes part of your identity, who you are, who we are. And so as we go through life, it's practicing godliness, training ourselves up in godliness. And we're always training. I'm going this week. I'm leaving again, but I'll be back next Sunday by, by the end of the week. Um, but I'm going to a, a uh, retreat called the Academy for Spiritual Formation. It's a five-day event. It'll be held over in um, Federal Way. It's part of the process that people can use to learn and to grow in their own spiritual formation, in their own identity as Christians. We all have ways of doing that, and he lists some of them there. Those are the things that we are to do to fulfill and to build up that identity as Christians throughout our lives. So we are called to godliness. That doesn't mean we're um, going around um, preaching Christ to everybody on the street kind of thing. But it means that we are Christians. It means that we are following the example of Christ. That we see ourselves as that all the time. And that we learn how we are to act as Christians and to be as Christians. With each other, with our families, with the world around us. Godliness.
I invite you to stand and join in number 883 in the back of the red hymnal, our affirmation of faith, a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Let's join together in prayer. Eternal God, we come before you as your people in prayer and we share with you the joys and the concerns that are upon our hearts in this moment of silence. Loving God, we give you thanks for the many blessings that you give to us in this life. For the blessings of sun and shade, daytime and nighttime, of seasons, of harvest and planting, work and dress. We give you thanks for family and for friends for neighbors, co-workers, people in our communities whose work makes our lives better. We give you thanks for young ones in our families, in our neighborhoods. Lord, we give you thanks for the many good gifts that you give to us. The gifts of relationship, the gifts of food, the gifts of things that taste wonderful. We give you thanks for the blossoms of flowers, the songs of birds, Lord, we pray for those who are in need in our communities, in our country, and around this world. We pray for those who are hungry, those who do not have clean water to drink, those who have no homes, those who are refugees, those living in places of war and instability. Lord, 
Lord, guide your people, guide all people, that we may reach out to each other to share out of the abundance that we have, of the gifts that you have given us. So that all may have those gifts. So that all may have peace and security. That all may have homes. That all may be loved and accepted for who they are. Your children. We pray this in the risen name of the risen Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to turn to page nine in the red hymnal for the service for the liturgy of uh, communion. You will not have all of the words that I will be saying starting at the bottom of that page, but you will have the same cues as to when to you, you are to come in for your parts. As always in the Methodist Church, you do not need to be a member of this or of any congregation to take communion, simply come forward down the center aisle. Um, <clears throat> take the bread that I will hand you, dip it into the cup that Elisa will be holding, and uh, then return to your seat. And um, if you are not able to come forward, uh, we will come to you with that uh, uh, with bread and the cup. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, 
You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you for it, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these who are mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. For out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and online and on these gifts of bread and the cup that we have here and at home. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Lisa, will you come forward? Oh, Donna's going to come forward. Okay. Those at home, please go ahead and take your communion. Now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor the all people. Help the afflicted. Go and serve God in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. One more announcement I just wanted to make before um, we leave. I forgot to do earlier in the day. We do have the Hispanic Church back here again, meeting with us in the in our space in the afternoons. So that's a wonderful thing. They're they're meeting at two o'clock as they were before. So I uh, just wanted to let you all know that that's happening now, uh, uh, once again. So that's that's a good news. Now, go forth in peace. 